What's going on everybody? How you doing? In today's video, this is a donation request. This is for Rob. This is 10,000 Maniacs. This is Eat for Two. This is off of their fourth album, Blind Man Zoo from 1989. We're gonna check this out. If you're new here, please subscribe, check out my videos, all kinds of videos, reaction videos, space videos, music videos, check it out. You like the channel, you wanna support the channel, all kinds of ways you can get super thanks underneath this video. You can hit me direct in the description. I got PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, Amazon wishlist, mailing address, and I do donation requests just like this one. So if there's something you want me to listen to, watch, talk about, hit me direct, PayPal, Cash App, Venmo in the notes section. Leave a link, leave a description, let me know what you want the video to be on, I'll make the video. You can also email me at jpanreadsemail at gmail.com. Thank you guys. Okay, so I don't think I've done or I've heard anything off of this album. Uh, it's their fourth album, released May 4th. Uh, contains songs addressing social issues and current events, which occurred during and before the production of the album. Eat for Two, Trouble Me, and You Happy Puppet were released as singles. First two of the three charted in the United States. Okay. Mixed reviews from music critics, some of whom praised the overall content while others criticized the music and lyrics. Numerous songs on Blind Man's Zoo were inspired by social issues and contemporaneous events despite Merchant's limited knowledge of politics. Um, there's a source for that. I don't know what's going on with that. Merchant said that most of the album stems from her recurring theme of betrayal. Some critic considered it a starkly pessimistic statement in contrast to the band's usual greatest professional optimism. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of what I was thinking in terms of that last song. Like the lyrics were kind of dark, but the music didn't sound dark. I don't have a problem with that kind of thing. I yeah, I just noticed it. That's all. First track, Eat for Two, which is what we're doing, is about a teenage girl who is five months pregnant. Merchant did not intend for the song to have an anti-abortion message, and it does not address abortion. Okay, that's all it says. There's no more, uh, I feel like I need another sentence for closure. <laughs> What's going on with that? Like, I feel like something was left out of that. But okay, Rolling Stone... Critics said it's their best record, praising the band as more focused. Okay, well, let's get to this, I think. 10,000 Maniacs, eat for two. Let's do it. Bam.
Yeah, I mean, that's kind of hard not to not to hear. <laughs> right? I'm looking at the lyrics, right? And I mean, it's certainly, I mean, I'm not, you know, some, this is now the second time that I'm going through lyrics and all this, you know, on these videos or whatever. The first one was just, it caught me. This is more like, I feel like I need to have them up just because of what I read already. And I'm kind of like, okay, well, it's certainly not a positive spin on pregnancy, I'd say, right? Kind of sounds like not a positive spin on pregnancy. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not specifically saying it has anything to do with the abortion. I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing or reading anything like that. But again, it's not like a positive thing on abortion. I, I mean, on a, on a, on pregnancy. So I'm kind of like, okay. I mean, I know that it's not, I mean, I had one kid, right? And it wasn't me, it was my wife, but I was there the whole time, <laughs> right? And it's like, I, I can see how it's difficult, you know? It's it's not, you know, it's uh, it's not, it's not easy. Certainly not easy. There's like good things and bad things and good days and bad days. And I, and I think also it seems like it's pretty personal where it's like some people do better at it than others, like have a better time than others. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to be insensitive about this kind of thing at all. I'm just saying it seems as though that some women have an easy pregnancy and some women don't, <laughs> you know? And uh, I'm sure that even that statement will, will be misconstrued, but whatever, that's, uh, that's what it is, right? The song, aside from that, sonically, I thought it sounded way better. It sounded way better than the last record what we heard so that sounds cool peter asher was the producer oh yeah yeah peter asher did their last album okay i don't know this one just sounds better maybe it's the recording that i picked up the last one definitely sounds like a song that she wrote she wrote the music for this and it just because it was very piano heavy so you could tell that she was driving it i like the guitar stuff at the end uh the guitar solo kind of with the vocals still happening i like that i thought that was cool and that's that i mean this to me is really about lyrics this song i mean you know i almost don't want to touch it with <laughs> i'm just like <laughs> but yeah all i'll say is it's not it doesn't seem like it's a positive look on a uh, pregnancy so that's that cool all right well we have another one off of the same album. It was one of the other signal, uh, uh, one of the other singles actually. Trouble me is up next. I'll catch you then later.